sorry, how are you? Um, welcome, welcome. Hi. How's everyone? Uh, guys. Okay, today I'm reading something very short. Um, it's an essay out of this book, Feminism Is. Um, South Africans Speak Their Truth. It is edited by Jane Thorpe. It is um, it's the first one that um, that I know of that Jane Thorpe edited. And the latest one that she has out is Living While Feminist, Our, Our Bodies, Our Truth. Um, so she's edited these two. This one came first. Uh, I don't want to lose my page. This was released in 2018, and this one was released this year. Uh, I've read uh, from this before, and we've had a, a live discussion with one of the, the, the authors of the one essay. Because a few of them, a few of the, uh, the people who, who wrote in here, um, I know, so I did actually have a live with um, Rele, but we don't have the video, so maybe we should actually have another one. But that is what I'm reading today. I'm going to read the back of the book um, and then we will start. This is nonfiction. Um, we've been reading a lot of fiction work. I thought today might be different. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to read what is written on Goodreads or Amazon. Um, feminism is, in this book, South African feminists explore the often vastly different experiences and perspectives in accessible and engaging voices. Feminism is, touches on issues as wide ranging as motherhood, anger, sex, race, inclusions and exclusions, the noisy protest and the quiet struggle. Um, I don't know if you guys are into collecting um, anthologies that are nonfiction, like these ones, um, but these are pretty good books to um, add onto your collection um, if you would like to actually um, expand your knowledge on the subject or learn and unlearn and see other people's um, opinions of what feminism is to them. Um, I know this one has a very, um, I think the first, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first essay. Yeah, um, Professor Pumla Dineo Gola um, actually has one of my favorite um, essays from her um, on the subject, Mothering, A Mothering Feminist's Life. A celebration, meditation, and roll call. That's her 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 essay. Um, so this book is broken down into sections of inspiration, inclusions and exclusions, conversations, power and fury, and feminism in practice. So I will be reading from uh, feminism in practice. Let me see. Yes. Feminism in Practice. The, the, the essay I've chosen to read today for you is Feminism is Memory and Present by Michelle Hating. I hope that's how I spell her, I pronounce her surname. Uh, okay, do you, do you call yourself a feminist? That's the back of the book. Do you call yourself a feminist? What does this mean in your daily life? In this book, South African Feminists, okay, so that's the part that I've read. South African Feminists explore the often vastly different experiences and, and, and perspectives in accessible and engaging voices. Feminism is touches on issues of as wide ranging as motherhood, anger, sex, race, inclusions and exclusions, the noisy protest and the quiet struggle. It will challenge your thinking and inspire you to action, reaffirming the urgent necessity of feminism in South Africa today. So, um, Lauren Bierx, I don't know if that's how I say her surname, but she's um, an, an author. She says about feminism is, it's fierce, it's incisive, it's compassionate and thoughtful. This is an essential collection of diverse voices. I think that's the reason why I like um, Jane Thorpe's uh, uh, 
collections, both Living Well Feminist and um, Feminism is, is that the voices are so different. Um, so yeah, that's why I enjoy her work so much. Uh, and this one also for me, I felt I haven't um, touched on a lot of the essays, but uh, I thought it's more of a why, like a, a younger um, range of um, writers. So maybe check it out. It is available uh, in all bookstores. They both are. They are online. And I know NB Publishers, the publishers for both of them. Um, it's actually uh, Quella Books. They're under Quella Books, which is an imprint of NB Publishers. Uh, they do have um, a podcast uh, on on Spotify. There is a podcast of all some of the, the, the contributors actually reading from their essays which could actually also be nice um at smole hi smole and smole says i enjoyed feminism is more than i thought i would i pleasantly i was ple pleasantly su surprised yeah i also was um it's actually quite like when i read a professor pumla's um essay i felt like oh my gosh like yeah the things that we that we experience with our friends and the people that are supportive uh, towards us are uh, is really feminism like your people will hold you and support you and be there for you you know and yeah like her essay being called um a mothering feminist's life a celebration a meditation and roll call so that is her celebrating the people in her life as a mother um the people who have supported her through her mothering um yeah and i like that feminism isn't the same thing to everyone and both these books actually show that but yeah that's it i'm gonna start reading and then um I'll read the comments after. In one of my earliest memories, I've got my forehead pressed against a white wall. My little body is shaking with sobs. I was crying because I didn't want to kiss a man on the mouth. Just do it. In the Afrikaans community, it's custom to kiss our ooms, uncles, hello. No one understood why I had such a problem with it. My whole childhood was punctuated by tantrums thrown because men tried to kiss me or hold me without my permission. I can still remember their dry, brittle lips, their sharp mustaches smashing against my mouth. I don't know why kissing grown men who didn't have violent intentions triggered such strong emotions in me. Sometimes I wondered if my body was predicting my future traumas. I was 10 when the nightmares started. A dark shadow would hide behind me and grab me. I could feel it creeping up, touching my leg. I would startle awake, gasping for breath. This all happened before I knew what the, world, the word feminism meant. Before I understood sexism, my body was fighting against it. It was reacting to a kind of violence I didn't yet have words for. What I can't remember is the first time I heard the word feminism or knew I was a feminist. But by the time I was 15, I understood that the men around me felt they had some sort of ownership over my body. I thank God every day I wasn't born a woman. An old man with a crinkled face exclaimed at a bry, causing those in the room to boom with laughter. His eyes followed my movements. There were pieces of brown cow flesh in his teeth. The bones picked clean on the white plate, on the plate in his hand. Feminism carved itself into my flesh sometime during all of these memories. After I was raped, feminism gave me the words to fight the hopeless moments. And once you have words to describe the darkness, it cannot own you anymore. 
My feminism was a shield and it protected me from those who wanted to hurt me. But for a long time, I didn't realize the feminism I believed in and fought for was so deeply flawed. I am embarrassed about how late in life I realized what intersectional feminism was and why it was important. I never thought about other women's very different experiences of the world and how my brand of white feminism could be hurtful to them. I practiced a one-size-fits-all feminism where other views and opinions weren't valued but were seen with, were seen as threats. I did not understand or respect the complex layers of oppression that cannot be chopped up into sections for the sake of convenience. Once I realized this, I knew feminism was about learning and that for a long time I had been talking about listen, without listening. Feminism didn't only give me a voice, it made me more aware of what those around me were going through. Audre Lorde said, I'm not free while any woman is unfree, even when her shackles are very different than my own. I'm realizing this more and more each day, and I hope I will never stop listening. Feminism is anger, strength, power, softness, forgiveness. Feminism isn't here to make you or me comfortable. It's here to shake you, push you, and this discomfort will bring about change. Yeah. Um, that was Michelle Hating's um, essay in Feminism Is. Um, I actually wanted to share it because I thought of sharing a, uh, a quote today and I kept getting distracted because of um, homeschooling. I was marking. So I will share it uh, just after this. Michelle Hating was born in South Africa in 1988 and holds an honors degree in psychology from the University of Cape Town. She lives in Cape Town with her partner and two naughty cats. She currently works as content manager at an NGO. Um, it's pridegult.org. Um, the Girl Who Was Raped is her first book and was published by Mujachi Books in 2016. The North American rights to the book were bought by Inanna Publications and the Australian rights by Spinifex. You can follow her on Twitter at Miss underscore Hating. So yeah, that was um, Michelle Hating uh, who wrote Feminism is Memory and Present. So um, I... I highlighted uh, these sentences and once you have words to describe the darkness it cannot own you anymore. My feminism was a shield and it protected me from those who wanted to hurt me. Um, and feminism didn't only give me a voice, it made me more aware of what those around me were going through. And her feminism is anger, strength, power, softness and forgiveness. Feminism isn't here to make you or me comfortable. It's here to shake you, to push you, and this discomfort will bring about change. So, yeah, that is what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, you know how we grow up and we are forced to kiss the uncles and kiss everybody. And as a mother... Um, I've realized that we can't really force kids to do things that they don't want to do. Uh, we grew up differently. Uh, we had to kiss our uncles, even though we don't want to. <laughs> um, I remember I had, my mom has her, her late uncle. Um, she she would we we saw him as a grandfather because he was very old by the time he passed away, but he really loved kissing, and oh, I hated it. Even as a teenager, I still hated it. Oh, make his soul rest in peace. But 
yeah, I really didn't like it. And yeah, and now that I read these texts, I'm like, actually, you know, gosh, our mothers put us through a lot of things that we didn't really want to do and hug people you don't want to hug and, 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 ugh. We need to actually not do it as parents. If you're a parent, please don't force your kids to kiss people she doesn't want to kiss or hug people that he doesn't want to hug. If they want to hug, yes, it's fine. But ugh. so, yeah, you see her feminism protected her. And yeah, I actually didn't like that where that the way that um, that uncle said, I thank God every day I wasn't born a woman. Ugh. So disgusting. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of beautiful, beautifully written essays in this book. Um, let me see if there are any comments. Um, hello, Miss Ngebe. Ngebe. Um, I have seen the book before. Uh, Miss Wyler says, I've seen the book before. I thought it is a university textbook. <laughs> Miss Wine. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know it's not. Um, so these are, are both edited by the same person. They are both edited by Jane Thorpe. And this one came out uh, just before the lockdown. So they released an ebook. And this one is from 2018. Um, but yeah, uh, that expert is tender and deeply touching. I will add it to my short stories, essays collection. Um, that's Miss Weiner and at Tandokazi says that line is a reminder that men are very aware of how women are treated. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they are. Um, they see these things, you know, um, and I mean, she was, a, she was young and people were, men were following her movements you know they could see they were already sexualizing her just by looking at her um, uh, uh, hi bookaholic queen after corona there shall be no kissing of relatives forever <laughs> yes no kissing <laughs> Um, James is strange, strange, the use of, of the word learned. So, so can one be born feminist? Um, yeah, I, th I feel like we, we are somehow born feminist. We just grow up and, and become aware of, of our feminism. I don't know. That's because I'm really also learning and I'm thinking, actually, she was in a way like as young as she was. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, what do you think? I don't know. I think uh, in our grown up age, we, we, we grow up and we read and the things that we read teach us things and teach us the way to the way other people see things and thus it informs the way we see ourselves so I feel like we are born as feminists um, and then we unlearn it as we grow up because like obviously patriarchy will will, will, will like drill things in you and 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 um, and then you grow up and you actually remember who you are and you actually remember that actually my feminine like michelle says her feminism saved her you know um i don't know my sometimes i always uh, I, I describe uh, my daughter as very fierce i mean she's very tiny i mean she's two but i see it you know like she's fierce and she's strong and she's stubborn and 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 um so as she grows up obviously just like us we 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 unlearned things and Ms. Wana says some are born more feminist than others just like leadership you see it in the kids in the playground yeah yeah I mean 
Um, yeah, I also I also agree with that. I mean, it's just like leadership. You there's there's more people, and then people say you are being a bully. No, it's not that. <laughs> I agree with you. Some people are born to be game changers. It's inexplicable at the time, but the ideology, oh yeah, ideology gets refined with experience, conversations and encounters. Yeah. I think um we grow up, we we grow up and then things are, are like things like oh no, um girls are the ones who 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 are who handle the kitchen more and 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 you know those are no like then when you are a, an adult you're like actually no you, like my son will learn how to handle the kitchen you know type of thing and our mothers were like were always like no let the boys um go play and the girls will be in the kitchen no no pity no you know so <laughs> um yeah i think feminism we are born with it that's my own opinion but yeah that was today's um i'm very quick today what's the time yeah it's even before 30 minutes so guys um that was it let me let me can i read an introduction by by the editor um some more than others yes uh just like how a girl like a fierce person um is like seen as this strong person and they very um like well spoken and 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 they grow up to to actually be a leader um tandokazi agrees with miss Wina more than others yes so uh let me read the introduction and then we wrap it up in september 2016 i attended an open book festival event called talking feminism hosted by Mohale Mashiro of The Yearning, yay, and featuring Yewande Omotoso, Bomboy, Boy, I'm reading Bomboy Boy um, with um, some friends, and uh, from the 16th of July until month end, July, uh, tomorrow from the 1st until the 15th, we're reading um, The 30th Candle by Angela Mahola, we're rereading it, um, but yes, Yawande Omotosa is the author for Pomboy. That's her first book. And um, The Woman Next Door is her second book. Pumla Dineo Gola and Nedi Oko Okorafo. This panel was inspiring, powerful, and reminded me of the incredible feminists we have the pleasure to interact with in real life or online each day. And I really, really love how everybody is so accessible during this time. It's amazing to see. The panel also reminded me that feminism doesn't mean the same thing to all people. That feminism is sometimes a contested space. That the label doesn't meet everyone's expectations, but is a welcome home for others. That feminism is profoundly about power, potential, passion, and rights. That feminism has changed in purpose and meaning throughout the ages. Having been reminded of all these things, I got the idea to pull together a collection of essays written by South African feminist writers on the topic feminism is and put out the call to feminists I knew asking them to nominate or suggest other feminists. This process of call and response yielded the essays you find in this collection today. It was a process of surprise and delight and also a process of learning of making mistakes and having difficult conversations and of making space for ideas that are brave. To work with this incredible collection of writers felt like a dream come true for me. Feminism is as necessary today as it has ever been. The fight for space, equality and respect demands that each and every one of us speaks our truths, even when our voices shake, especially when our voices shake. The world needs us not to give up. I, like many other feminists, drew strength from the defiance of the hundreds of thousands of people who marched in 2016 against the promotion of an overtly racist, sexist, capitalist above all else, climate change denialist to the highest office in the world. But a march 
or even many marches on one day is not enough to change things for, the, for good. We must do more. Too many of us have been lulled into a sense of complacency, ignoring the fact that most women still do not have it easy and they certainly aren't treated as equals. The world is burning and we cannot be fodder for its flames. Action is required and the best time to act has always been right now. There is no better time to be a feminist. Feminism is a fight for equality and it must be equality for all, not just for some. We are not sure sometimes whether we agree or whether we even understand one another. But the desire to understand is there. And that is a very first step to building a feminism that is more inclusive, accommodating and powerful. We must walk and talk this journey together. And this collection should provide you with some good reading material along the way. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. That was from Jen Thorpe. So the, yeah, the, the intro explains everything. Um, that's what uh, Jane is saying. Yeah. So uh, feminism is really different for everyone. So hi, everybody that just joined in. Um, I just read the intro to this book. Amazing collection. And this is the one that follows uh, this one. This one was uh, published this year, um, just before the lockdown. It is available in bookstores now. Um, and Feminism Is was the first one. Um, South Africans speak their truth and living while feminist, our bodies, our truths. So these are both edited by Jane Thorpe. Um, yeah, you can get them. Uh, I'm sorry if I've been reading too many books that are new and you don't have them, but you must go get them. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's reading. Uh, uh, the, the video will be loaded up on IGTV uh, right after this. And then I will also load it up onto YouTube. Um, there is a YouTube channel, uh, Bukamoso Book Club on YouTube. Um, so I do load the videos afterwards and then you can actually go onto them and um, maybe binge watch. Uh, so yes, guys, um, ever so booked. Hello, ever so booked. That's a nice name. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, that was it today. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. So we are reading from the, the Gerald Crack anthologies. These ones. Uh, I'll be reading another short story from there. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Ms. Wina says, thanks for introducing um, or introducing me to the collection. Okay, it's my pleasure. And no, it's not an exercise book. I like the covers. See, and it does. Um, this one actually has a list of the people that have contributed in here. Um, Feriel Hafaji, Gugule Tum Shungu. Gooks, um, B. Kasimanga, Kami oh, B. Kaminga, Aisha Dadi Patel, Rebecca Davis, Nomalanga Mkize, Gina Gadini, Pumla Deneo, and others. And Mohale Mashuko says it's a necessary collection of voices. Feminism is about freedom of choice, equality, and sometimes being badly behaved. Yeah misbehaved um thank you guys i will see you guys tomorrow cheers